Hi everyone, welcome. Hope you're doing absolutely awesome. So this is going to be an update on my A Purvis Blade Zerks. So if you watched my first video on the knife, I was not happy with the action. Um, it was not snappy at all and it was very easy to fail. So I emailed Adam Purvis and he replied and told me that I could either attempt to adjust the action myself by increasing the bend on the lock bar or I could mail the knife back to him for adjustment. So I decided to take it on uh, myself. So I disassembled the knife and increased the bend on the lock bar by about 1.5 millimeters, which is about the thickness of a penny. There was some blue thread locker on the body screws, so I recommend applying a soldering iron to them at about 500 degrees Fahrenheit or 250 degrees Celsius to disable the thread locker before you try to remove them. Overall, the construction seems to be pretty much standard. You have pretty deep milling on both sides of the scales to reduce weight. The cages of the bearings are metal and there are steel thrust washers on both sides. Also, the pivot is two-piece. It is free-spinning, so there is no D-shape to it or no key to keep it from spinning. So you will need um, Torx drivers on both sides of it to loosen it. It did make the detent snappier, but the lock bar tension seemed excessive. And at that point, I was sick of messing with the knife, so I decided to just mail it back to Adam for adjustment. Uh, he worked on it and mailed it back to me pretty promptly. And what he ended up doing was installing a new lock bar insert and a new pivot barrel. The action is better now, but I wouldn't call it snappy. It's still relatively easy to fail. Maybe it's a product of the relatively small flipper tab, but I'm still not happy with the action. And this is after Adam hand-tuned it. So let me talk about some of the positives now. I do really love the styling with this upswept blade. The overall design is really clean and elegant in my opinion, and that's what influenced me to purchase the knife. Also, the ergonomics of the handle are really superb, so I give Adam a big thumbs up for the ergonomics. Now let me go into some of the negatives that I see with this knife. Keep in mind that I may be quite a bit harsher than the average reviewer out there. I'm not so impressed by Wii's quality control or their engineering. At this point, I've had four knives from Wii Knife Company, and three out of the four have not had good actions. The detent strengths from sample to sample are just not consistent. With this particular knife, there was something funny about the pivot screw. It didn't feel right. Also, one of these backspacer screws was cross-threaded or something. The knife came with heavy thread locker on all the screws. Um, one thing to realize from an engineering perspective is that the smaller the screw you have, the weaker the thread locker sh that should be applied to it. So on these body screws, I would either like to see no thread locker at all or a weaker thread locker such as Loctite Purple. The construction is rather basic. The pivot is free spinning. So if you need to adjust it, you're going to have to have a tool on both sides of the pivot. I definitely prefer non-free spinning pivots. The same applies to the backspacer tubes. There's a tube in the backspacer there and also one there, and they are both free spinning. So that can make it difficult to get the screws out of the backspacer tube. Um, the screws themselves, they are all T8 screws. Um, but the recess in the head is only one millimeter deep. And I would prefer to see about a 1.5 millimeter recess. It's just too easy to, to damage the screws with that uh, shallow of a recess. Um, the lock bar cutaway, I would like to see the lock bar cutaway moved to the interior of the knife, both for aesthetic reasons and because it would move the cutaway away from the nub of the pocket clip and totally eliminate any possibility of fabric getting trapped in there. The, um, there is kind of a chamfer on the landing zone here for your um, index finger, 
but it's kind of an odd shape. I don't really understand why this chamfer is shaped that way. It's kind of sharp instead of being rounded, which is what you would like. The blade on the Xerx appears to have a media blasted finish, and I do not like media blasted finishes at all. The reason is that if you happen to get a scratch on it, there's no way for you to fix it unless you have access to media blasting equipment. As for the pocket clip, the pocket clip works decently. It has plenty of retention. Um, but honestly, a standard Benchmade style clip works better. Um, with some, some pants, I found it difficult to get the knife in and out of the pocket. Um, also, I would like to see a wider flat area on the bottom of the nub to reduce pocket clip wear. I mean, reduce pocket wear. As for customer service, from everything I've seen, Adam appears to be a really nice guy, but he appears to be a one-man show. And there were three instances where I emailed him and he did not respond to my email and I had to email him a second time. And I think I'm still waiting on a response from him from two or three months ago, maybe three months ago. Um, so he should um, do better tracking of his customer service requests. Okay, the final issue for me with this knife is the Chinese production. Um, I would much rather see the knife produced in USA or Canada or even Taiwan. Um, Okay, well, I think that sums up my thoughts. If you could put your comments below, I'd really appreciate to hear from you. Also, if you could subscribe, like, and share, I'd really appreciate it. I'd like to thank you for watching, and have a great day. Bye now.